These movies deserve a little better. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 good movies with bad IMDb ratings. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're looking at movies that received relatively good reviews from official critics, but that have poorer ratings on IMDb from viewers. Please note that these ratings are accurate as of this video's production and may not be reflective of future ratings. Number 10. Hail Caesar The Coen brothers have always been a little divisive. Their movies are often surreal and idiosyncratic, and while some of them have enjoyed a warm reception from both critics and audiences, see Fargo and No Country for Old Men, others have been largely ignored by general moviegoers. Hail Caesar, their movie about the 1950s film industry, is one of those movies. While critics love the stellar production design and hilarious cast, audiences don't quite take to it, and it currently stands at just 6.3 on 10 on IMDb. More than rumors. The site's users tend to agree that it was well cast, but criticize its lack of a cohesive and interesting story. Honestly, they should give it another chance. Faith! Faith! How about faith? Faith. Number 9. Annihilation Annihilation was never going to be a success with general audiences. While it was marketed as an exciting sci-fi romp, it's actually a very slow, methodical, and thought-provoking movie about depression and grief. The shimmer is a prism, but it refracts everything. Critics adore the movie, praising its blend of sci-fi visuals and action with a thematic and complex story. Audiences don't like it nearly as much, scoring it a 6.9 out of 10. How do you explain that? While some users praise the movie along with the critics, Others call it too slow, illogical, and pretentious, often arguing that its pretty visuals mask an intellectually unsatisfying and boring movie. To them, it's all just window dressing. Number 8. It Comes at Night Production company A24 is one of the most divisive creators in the modern film industry. Their unique horror movies like The Witch and It Comes at Night have received critical acclaim, but they are often lambasted by general moviegoers expecting a more conventional experience. It Comes at Night is another victim of misleading marketing, as audiences were seemingly upset at the lack of traditional horror. They were expecting monsters and scares, whereas the movie was more interested in character drama. We just want what's fair. We want enough food and enough water, then we're gonna go, and you're never gonna see us again. If approached correctly, It Comes at Night is a cool and forebodingly dark experience. However, if you're expecting a monster movie, you are bound to be disappointed as evidenced by the movie's 6.2 score on IMDb. You see anything, Will? Nothing. Number 7. Dear White People You just knew this movie was going to be controversial from the title alone. Dear White People tells the story of a diverse Ivy League school that experiences intense racial tensions. Is he afraid letting girls gather in groups might start a little rebellion on his plantation? It's praised by critics for its wit and topical themes, and writer-director Justin Simeon won numerous awards, including the Special Jury Prize at the Sundance Film Festival. However, the movie holds just a 6.1 rating on IMDb, and most of the negative reviews can be attributed to politics. You're the new black voice of the bugle. We're just trying to figure out if you're a friend or a foe. We gotta protect our girl. IMDb users bemoan the way the white characters were portrayed, call the movie toxic, and attack Simeon for being a poor man's Spike Lee. Number 6. Ghostbusters Yes, the new Ghostbusters may pale in comparison to the original, but it did not at all deserve the treatment it received at the hands of the public. We saw ghosts. We saw ghosts. Yeah, we saw ghosts. We saw ghosts. Oh my god. It's like we saw ghosts. We saw ghosts. The movie generated good reviews from critics, scoring a 74% and a 6.5 on 10 rating on Rotten Tomatoes. However, the movie is chastised by many viewers, and currently sits at just 5.3 on 10 on IMDb. The movie was dead on arrival both because it was a reboot of a beloved and frankly untouchable movie, and because it had an all-female cast. We're just worried that you all are drawing a lot of attention to yourselves. 
audiences didn't even give the movie a chance, and the people involved in its creation received disgusting remarks that showed just how toxic the internet can be. Number 5. Spy Kids While the Spy Kids franchise may have gone downhill, the original is often seen as a classic. My parents can't be spies, they're not cool enough! That's cool. It was written and directed by Robert Rodriguez, who created an intelligent and fun family movie that both children and adults can enjoy. This is reflected by its 93% score on Rotten Tomatoes. However, the movie sits at just 5.5 on 10 on IMDb, creating a massive dichotomy between audiences and critics that's quite remarkable. Reviewers attack its dated technology and special effects, acting, and ridiculous storyline, often stating that their nostalgia goggles aren't strong enough to mask the movie's poor production. You just can't please everybody. With your reputations, I was expecting something a little more impressive. Number 4. Haywire You probably haven't even heard of Haywire. It stars MMA fighter Gina Carano as Mallory Kane, a black ops operative who's targeted for assassination. It failed to make waves at the box office and quickly faded into obscurity, despite its 80% rating on Rotten Tomatoes. Then you can find out what we both want to know, which is why this is happening. Critics praise the movie's kinetic action and Steven Soderbergh's unique directorial style, but audiences do not see it that way, scoring it just a 5.8 on 10 on IMDb. They don't seem to care for the cliché script or Gina Carano's stilted acting, although they do tend to praise her convincing fight sequences. Sometimes audiences want a little more than action, but hey, action is pretty awesome too. Number 3. Spring Breakers Harmony Korine's Spring Breakers is quite an interesting movie. It stars James Franco as an eccentric drug dealer named Alien who boasts cornrows, loud shirts, and a grill. Sit the f down. It's an over-the-top crime drama, but audiences just don't buy it. Critics are a little lukewarm on the movie, but are ultimately favorable, and it currently holds a 67% rating on Rotten Tomatoes. However, its audience score sits at just 38%, and it holds a 5.3 on IMDb. Look at my shit! <laughs> Viewers can't stand Franco's performance, and they call this movie a perfect example of style and sexy bikini-clad girls over substance. But the movie is a little like Spring Break itself. Brassy, loud, and in your face. Seems like a dream. Number 2. The Cable Guy We don't care what anyone says. The Cable Guy is awesome. So. <sighs> your lady kicked you out. What? A brilliant Jim Carrey stars as a lonely and creepy cable installer who stalks his friendly customer. The movie received a mixed reception upon release in 1996, as audiences, including professional critics, simply weren't expecting the movie to be so dark. At the time, Jim Carrey was known for his silly comedies, and many were taken aback seeing him play such a disturbed and unhinged character. The Cable Guy still holds a measly 6.1 on 10 on IMDb, although many of its top reviews call it a misunderstood and underrated movie that is unfairly judged against Carrie's wackier and more lighthearted filmography. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. Do I know you? Of course. <laughs> Don't you remember? <laughs> I, I take it I should. Silly. It's me. What's wrong with you that you want to be with me? I, I'm, a, I'm a drinker. I don't care. I've been with a lot of guys. I don't care. How many? Number 1. The Blair Witch Project The Blair Witch Project has always been a divisive movie, even when it was released back in 1999 amidst a media circus. Critics are keen on the movie, calling it a fresh and original approach to the horror genre, and it currently holds an 87% rating on Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> I'm gonna die out of here. Its success bred an entirely new subgenre of horror, which is still going strong to this day. However, it has consistently remained a love it or hate it movie, and audiences seem to hate it. It sits with a 6.4 rating on IMDb with many reviews pointing to its uneventful plot, lack of conventional scares, and primitive filmmaking. It's a historic movie, but it still has its fair share of detractors. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.